Well, hello there. What's up, people? Welcome to another Sunday Vampire the Masquerade. Um, Bat is dropping a 30 month 3 sub. Look at that. Thank you very much. And the hosty hosts, uh, Grim Mina and uh, Grim Mina for the hosty host. Thank you, Bat. Appreciate it. 30 months. Holy crap. It's been a while. It's been a while. Anywho, so guys, um, again, Sunday, Sunday Vampire the Masquerade, episode five, I believe we're up to this evening of season three. Um, just a couple of announcements. Obviously, we have finished the Curse of Strahd um, maps. Finally, it took a long time, but we got there. So the entirety of Curse of Strahd has been mapped out in Dungeon Draft and is now available to all gold subs on the Gilded. Uh, the one, uh, OneDrive link is there, so all the maps are available uh, in gridded and non-gridded WebP and uh, universal VTT uh, format. If you prefer them in another format, let me know and I can get them to you. No, no dramas at all. Uh, as long as Same with the Red Jackal Adventure and map is available there for gold tier subs as well. Uh, Lost Minds of Findelva will be available uh, the first of next month for gold tier subs, and all of those packs are available for a one-off purchase. If you want to just buy, if you if you don't want to sub and you just want to pay for them, uh, the prices on the Gilded check out the Gilded announcements. Um, the prices for each um, pack is there, and again you get them in whatever format you you require: JPEG, PNG, um, all that sort of stuff. Gridded, non-gridded. Um, and they're all high quality, large, large images. Just bear that in mind. They are very big, um, but they are um, definitely high quality images. Right. Tracy will be arriving when he arrives as usual. Oh, he's here. Um, is he here? Oh, look, he's there. I got a, he's the only one. He must be changing his name every time. Because he's the only one I have to put the link in now. This is weird. One moment, I will add him. There he is. He's there. Now I can hear you, Trash. Oh, Unless what? he doesn't speak. There we go. I, I speak, don't I? Not really. Well, occasionally. <laughs> Good timing. We've just only just started, so you haven't yeah. missed anything. Anywho, yay! With that being said, um, we're going to turn go over. Back in my box now. We're going to turn over to our storyteller, and for last last episode's um, recap. But it has been a little while. We had a couple. Of, we had a, a a sickly person last week, so we weren't able to um, play. But he's still kind of sick. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, we're all sick, but. Anywho, we'll turn it over to Baz and we'll get started. Hey team, welcome aboard everybody. Let's rock and roll. Last episode, Zane was at Elysium in Echo's office. Echo has been summoned to the council. She handed him the letter she found and she gave him some information on a house that was in everybody's favorite friend, Jeremy. Jeremy's name. Nathan offers some extra computer items to Zane as he grabs his own spears from his bag and gets back into watching The Hunting of the Scourge, one of his favorite TV shows. Meanwhile, the Scourge jumps straight at Isaac, biting chunk out of him and taking damage from the Vitae that curses with blood sorcery. Jax unloads incendiary rounds, catching the enemy, but the Scourge was fast and he was available... Uh, uh, excuse me, he was able to avoid some of the shots. Um, Pip invisibly removed his shoes and aided Isaac, seeing he was injured, taking a quick claw for his troubles. And Pip also led Isaac to a nearby car as the Scourge and Jax engaged in melee combat. There were some back and forth blows as Jax tried to keep Xander busy, both Kindred taking some damage, but neither really getting the upper hand. 
a couple of vans then rolled in with Jax's team jumping out, narrowly avoiding Pip's attempt at driving as Pip also fired his pistol at the enemy. A lot of gunfire was hailed, released in the direction of the scourge, but it dissipated into a misty smoke getting away from the group. And lastly, Zane was approached by Nathan, whose face morphed and became Jeremy. He asked Zane to give him some information as part of the deal for bringing him back from Torpor. And Zane, in return, asked for the name of whose blood was used to bring him back. Zane also gave out some half truths when he was told the blood that was used was Prince Taylor's. But then our friend Jeremy warned Zane that if he tries to betray him, he will lead Zane to final death. And Zane did receive a knife to his shoulder to remind him how easy it is. He then gave away the position of their secret haven. So we now find ourselves on a new evening. This is after Zane exited very quickly <laughs> the Elysium building and ran down the street. I think he took a bullet for his uh, for his escape. Nonetheless, we find ourselves now on the next evening. A Tuesday evening, to be precise. A bitterly cold wind pushes through the streets of Melbourne. As we look in on our kindred, first things first, all of you would have woken up this evening. So let us all make a lovely rouse check, a single red die rouse check. Looks like Jax is good. It looks like Pip is good. And <laughs> Zane, Zane, you gain one point hungrier, putting you at two hunger, I believe. I shall mark that so I can recall it. Nothing too major. Now, as we begin our evening, quite a few of you, when I say quite a few, two of the three of you here, are rather damaged. And we're looking to heal some wounds as we arise from our day slumber. Oh, certainly. All right, Jax, you want to heal a... Uh, you're, you're all aggravated. You want to yeah. heal an aggravated? I can heal an aggravated uh, my blood potency too off the bat. Uh, but I would like to try and heal another aggravated if I can. Ah, uh, you can heal a superficial yeah. after that, yes. So I need a, just a... That three rouse checks, isn't it? Three rouse checks. Yep. Uh, I get uh, I get hungrier. I passed on two, failed on one. Okay, so you are able to heal by surging that blood, calling it forward. You knit some of the wounds together, and you are able to remove one of those aggravated damages. But you do feel the beast within you well up, which is not unusual when you're trying to put yourself back together in these states. And you're going to try for a superficial as well? Uh, yes, why not? So it's a, just another single success. Success. So you can take, you know, if you've got the cross marked for your aggravated, you can have one of those crosses. So yep. you'll be at one aggravated, uh, two aggravated, one superficial, I believe. That's correct. Still, still a little damaged, but not as bad. Excellent. And Zane, would you like to heal some wounds as well? Yeah, I think I should. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to try and heal an aggravated first? Yeah. All right. I'll do that. Three rouse checks, please. Three red dice or normal? Three red dice. <laughs> so, you, you generally, it will succeed. You'll remove it. It just depends on how hungry you get knitting yourself together. That's the main thing here. Two successes, one bestial. Okay, so beast jewel doesn't matter at this point. Two successes is good, one failure. So you do get one point hungrier, but you're able to remove one aggravated. So you are now at hunger three, Zane, is drawing forth all the energies within you to repair some of those large... Oh, I'd imagine the bullet wound, the last one you got, probably be trying to... Yeah. The bullet sort of tung, tung, drops out on the ground and you heal that up. You have one superficial and three more aggravated. You can have a go at a couple of superficial if you like or just one no, I'll, I'll leave, leave it at that, that. Now. Leave it that. All right. so I just, for, just for context Jackson would be trying to heal the like the gash wounds the claw wounds across his neck and more visible wounds so that at least he can wear a jacket and hide some of the the others yeah. from plain view 
anything on your yeah, yeah your face, your neck yeah. definitely heals up, leaving uh, no real marks, no real scars, as you're able to knit it quite well. Maybe somewhat of a line there until you can heal some more of that aggravator. Yeah. But as a whole, uh, once you've got a jacket on, the average person wouldn't know the difference. Cool. And with that, Pip, you don't have any damage, I don't think. No, I have one superficial and one aggravated from oh, that. Oh, the yes, you got or two. So I can't have marked it down, so I will mark it now. Thank you for the honesty, sir. So are you going to go for the aggravated as well? Yep. Excellent. Oh, Give me three seven. of those hunger dice. I succeeded on one. All right. So you get two points hungrier then. Mm. Putting you at three hunger. Yep. Same as Zane. As you will the blood, the rouse the blood within you, repairing the scratch marks across your back. You can feel the skin mold itself together. You feel the blood push, the vitae push through. And then you hear the beast telling you it's time to go for another snack. And Zane, you would hear something similar. I mean, you guys know you're safe. You're roughly, you know, still, still food nearby. But you're, you're, you're holding it. But that beast is in your ear. Are you all wishing to meet together tonight? Or what, what is the plan? Uh, I believe Pip is at Jackson's Haven. Stayed stayed with me. Um, so and seeing... you, we don't know where you are right now, do we, Zane? No. And you don't have your I, phone. I've taken off to my... No. Um, so I dare say I would have made it back to my place. Yes, you made it back to your place. Then, um, because I don't have Jackson's new number or thereof i'm assuming pip still has his phone yep pip still has his phone i will send a message to pip saying haven compromise do not trust anybody um, mr riviera and i just sort of like hold the phone up to your face it's like oh well um oh shit Right. I think he's fucked up again. Yeah, I don't think he'd do that a second time. Well, maybe. Message him back and tell him, tell him, to tell him to come, give him this address. And I give him an address which is uh, like a block away from my haven. Um, and tell him, t tell Zane to meet us there in like an hour. Tell him he'll be safe. Sweet. So you, send, you send that message. Yeah. Pip, Pip, um, what, do you, what do you text him? What does Pip uh, actually text him? Uh, meet this location. You'll probably be safe. Maybe not. Nah, it'll be fine. See you there. Reply text. Nowhere's safe. No one's safe. Nowhere. No one. No one. No one. Not coming. <laughs> With that, if if Pip shows Jackson the message, it's up to Pip. Yeah, you. he's like he's being obtuse again, Mister Spencer. Okay, um, I will call Zane on the number by the text. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going to try and find the library. Uh, <laughs> if if, you, if Pip, uh, Pip would know where I would have showed him the night before. So, yeah, you, it's it's a – it looks almost like an old Victorian library the way it's set out. It's, it's – um, the whole haven is done in sort of 1920s, 1930s decor. And the library itself is – it look, sort of walking into it, it's almost like walking into an old manor home with the, the floor to ceiling uh, bookshelves around the outside of the room, couple, uh, probably one big one down the center. And I said, a lot of, a lot of history books, uh, some first editions, um, the first, first edition, uh, Edgar Allan Poe um, poetry and things like that. It's a lot of darker type stuff. Mm. Pip will reenact that scene from Beauty and the Beast. 
but it, it, your Pip would find it very unorganized and probably quite uh, quite triggering. It's like there's no real system to it. It's just it's been put together. <laughs> Pip, there is no Dewey system here. How Definitely dare not. he? Definitely no Dewey system. It's it's probably very unorganized according to Pip. So it would it would definitely keep him occupied for quite some time, I'd imagine. Um, but I would call Zane whether he answers or not. It's a different story. Zane, the phone you've just used to text Pip rings you. Is it an unknown number or is it Pip's number? I, th- I think, did you say you took Pip's yeah. phone, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. All right, I answer it. Zane? Pip? Near you? This is Jackson. Jackson. Yes. You just- no, it's not. It's not Jackson. Zane. Who are you? Shut the fuck up and listen. It's what is Jackson. going on? Oh. You said the. Did you did you fuck up Tim and give Jeremy. someone the haven again? Gave okay. Tim Haven. Wait, what? Lots of pain. Lots of pain. You're going to be in a whole lot more fucking pain if you don't tell me him, what's going on. Jeremy, him. Zane, take a breath. Well, Jeremy. You don't really take a breath. Calm the fuck down and tell me what's going on. Timmy. Yes. Timmy Timothy. has infiltrated Elysium. Elysium has infiltrated. Are you sure? Can take on disguise of anybody. Do not trust anybody. I don't trust anybody anyway. You know that. Echo's manservant. Echo's manservant. He tricked me. So you're saying... Bullets hurt, by the way. Well, no shit. Zane, meet me at the address. You will be safe. I will guarantee you're safe. No, not coming. Not, Not safe. Not safe. You won't nope. be safe if you don't turn no, up. I work from here now. Safe here. You know I can find you, right? And with that, I hang up. I then <laughs> make a phone call to my tech team and start the search to try and find out where he is. Uh, no worries. You make a phone call to your tech team and your tech and, team... And, and, and with that, I'll uh, start battening down the hatches and securing whatever I can. All right, Zane, I'm going to do a roll-off against you. <clears throat> You're going to be, uh, and it's a, exactly the same dice pool here. You're going to be rolling against intelligence and technology. Okay. Um, but the difference uh, here is Jax has a team of people on this, so I've got a couple of added dice. Now, I, I add, what do I add to that? Uh, so that's your intelligence technology. And if you've uh, got specialty in computers, computers, so you'll add an extra how many, how many is in that? I haven't carried a quick sheet. There we are. Well, I'm going to need those. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, I've got to use blood dice too, don't I? Yes. yes, whatever your hunger level is, that is three. All right, there, there. Get those ones out of the way. And here we go. <laughs> this will be interesting. Seven successes for me. No crit, unfortunately. Five, no crit. So as far as you're aware, you've battened down the hatches. You've got it all covered. You're... All that computer talk, you've, you've definitely, uh, your firewalls are up. You're doing multiple codes just to make sure that no one can pinpoint your exact whereabouts. You are fortified. Jax, it takes some time. Your team will get back to you in about half an hour's time, but no I'll give you the answer now. They, they give you an address. It's not an exact. They give you a, a pinpoint location of a couple of houses it could be couple of places it could be but it takes about half an hour so you'll get that no message worries. in half an hour's time during that time your phone rings 
Pip, not Jackson's phone, but I'm assuming you're still holding on to Pip's phone. I am, yes. <laughs> uh, Pip, in this half an hour, I'll, 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 I'll take it back. To, I, like, as I hung up from um, Zane, I would head back, head to the library and hand Pip his phone. I'm, I'm probably assuming I walk in on Pip just absolutely beside himself. <laughs> Yeah. It's already rearranging your library. <laughs> you give him the phone and he won't take it because he's not paying attention to him and we'll just have to put it somewhere. I'd probably put it down on a table or a desk in the in the library. So, Pup, as you're rearranging these books, these messy, messy books, who would who would dare not take care of the books how they're supposed to be? Your well, phone the books rings. are in good condition, just not in any kind of order. <laughs> Your phone is, is ringing, assuming it's on uh, vibrate or sound mode, you would hear it in both. Mm. Do you want me to grab that, Pip? Uh, you, you, look, uh, you look really busy. Like, yes, too too busy now. So I'd answer the phone. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll answer with, uh, you've reached Pip's phone. How might I help? I need Pip. Who, who is this? Uh, this is a friend of Pip. Who is this? A friend of Pip? This is... Tell Pip it's Marco and it's urgent. Marco? As in yes, that's what I... Sheriff Marco? Or Correct. former who are... Sheriff Marco? Who are... Jax, is that you? You should recognize my voice more than anybody. It's a damn phone. It's scratchy ass. And you probably pick up on it too. There is a bit of noise disturbance on the phone. Marco, uh, where the fuck have you been? Listen, you aren't safe. None of you. I've had to go into hiding. Like in America, the Sabat are trying to be a part of the Camarilla. There were some amongst the council that were hiding in plain sight. <sighs> I was with Prince Taylor's associates, the leftover ones, the ones who didn't get killed in the car accident. I'm not sure who knows about this, but we were in an office and we were attacked by these Sabat. We've had to go to ground because I fear more of the council are in on whatever this attack is, and that's why we're getting attacked from the inside. When did you go underground? Ah. Uh, Four days ago, five, I don't know, something like that. Oh, I, Before why? Leslie was attacked or after? No, after. We, we, got, we got a big problem. If what Zane is telling me is true, your friend, Timothy, has infiltrated Elysium and may or may not have been responsible for... Prince Taylor may or may not be dead. Um, it, it's 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 a lot. Um, I know we're not safe. I mean, no one. I don't. I mean, no one's safe. One hundred percent. We know that. Well, I mean, you're never safe. That's exactly right. However, the how do I know was... that you're not Timothy? Because he has the ability to shapeshift. Well, and he's already speak. used you, from what I understand. He's what? He's been you. He's been Nathan. He's been other people that we supposedly know. Damn it. So I can't trust that what you tell me is the truth. But this Timothy guy, we thought he was nothing. Well, we first investigated him. He didn't seem to have any brain power at all, but it seems that he is some sort of mastermind who's he working for i don't know this is the thing i i get the impression initially i thought it was sabat but i'm not so sure anymore i i still have my doubts about echo again i don't have the proof that i need to make a firm decision i'm still on the fence there where is she she's the new prince of course because you disappeared I had to. I'd know we were being chased. The Sabat have some powerful members. She's Sabat, I've been told. More so 
lately. Are you certain, and can you get me proof that I can take to the council? Problem is, you don't know who in the council we can go to. Listen, I need to... I sh- trust my sh- primogen, no one else. We should meet up. We will meet at a place I choose. That's fair. And if you don't come alone, you won't leave. Who would I come with? I don't trust any of them. And I give him a location in one of my hunting grounds, the closest hunting ground to this haven. Okay. And I tell him to come alone and there will be a the same toilet block that I fed at the night before. <laughs> <laughs> in fact. And I'll give is him the Pip location. Uh, Pip is here. He's with me. Zane is hiding. Yes. He doesn't but, answer his damn phone. And he won't. He's been, let's say, accosted by Timothy on multiple occasions by the sounds. I tried your number and his number and oh, answer machine or ring, ring, ring all the time. I'm like using just, a burner phone constantly. Be, as we all are, but it's uh, hard to keep a track of anything. I will text you a number that you can reach me on. It's another burner. It'll be clean for at least a day. Right. Okay. Any sort of... You can hear him in the background rummaging through something is I'm looking for some weapons to take care of myself because every time I get out in the open I seem to have someone tailing me so I've got to be careful so uh, when do you want to meet? An hour. An hour? Right, I'm going to make sure I'm not tailed. Definitely. Um, Pip will be with me, I think. I, I don't know. I, I'm really wanting to leave Pip here where he's at. I know he'll be safe here for at least a while, but also want to keep an eye on him. If what you say is true, I have means of potentially removing Echo. Potentially. Maybe. But I need to have solid evidence to take to the council after so I can guarantee that I'm not given final death for removing the prince in such a manner. Has Mary been found yet? We know where she is. We are attacking SI tomorrow night. Council's on board. Attacking SI heard, tomorrow. Have you heard of the, the blood hunt been issued? The scourge that Leslie released? I did get wind of it through Van Diemen, yes. But I haven't really had any contact with anyone since I've been underground. He's been tracked. Hopefully dealt with either tonight or tomorrow night. We really don't need him interfering with this SI business. We need to get Mary Wade back. How's he been tracked? Through his blood. He is absolutely lethal. You oh, must... I know. I have the scars to prove it right now. Hence how we got his blood. All right. You... <clears throat> All right, I'll meet you in the hour. See you there. Watch your back. You watch your front. Keep your eye on Zane and Pip. We don't know who's in on it, and we don't know who this Timothy guy is. He can disguise himself as anyone. We know. This is why I'm taking precautions. And I'll hang up the phone. As does he. <clears throat> uh, Pip. Just, Pip, just want to, just, just, we can come back and do it. Uh, we can come back later. I'll, I'll bring you oh, back. Yeah. I'll let you finish uh, it. I, I promise. We need to, we, that was Marco. Remember Sheriff Marco? Well, former yeah, Sheriff yeah. Marco? Yeah, yeah. He's alive, I think. I'm not sure. This is confusing. Yeah, as is this. Uh, I know. Like I said, I, I did tell you it would be a bit of a mess. I mean, I'm not. I don't have the the finesse with organisation as you do. I I hope your survival planning is better than your library planning. Or we're all dead already. I believe it is. I mean, we're all still alive. Um, unalive, undead, undead. Yeah, it is Tuesday night, isn't it? Just to clarify, uh, yeah. yeah, it is. 
Um, so we're going to go meet Marco and hopefully get some more information about what the hell is going on. It's a place that I know well. I will have my people there. Don't panic. I won't let anyone hurt you. I mean, Mr. Riviera seems pretty panicked. He is, but that's Zane, I think. That's how he lives in a state of perpetual panic. I mean, he did lose a hand and... and yeah. Get, I mean, messed up. that was kind of his own fault. But lately, I, I mean, with what he's said, if that's true, then Elysium's not safe anymore. We don't know who we can trust. Hopefully he's um, somewhere safe now then um well i i will f i've got people working on it we will find out where he is and we'll go get him i want to keep you guys safe i really do i don't think he's gonna like that very much i don't think he's gonna like it either which is i'm, I'm gonna need your help to convince him um All right. i promised marco i would keep you safe and i intend to keep that promise now you remember what we discussed a night or so ago about Prince Echo and my suspicions. Oh, yeah. Marco has pretty much confirmed my my suspicions that she is working for or is at least tied into the Sabbat. They're the church vampires, yeah? Yeah. You remember when we were looking for Billy, and we found oh, the yeah. church. Billy. That means she's the enemy, Pip. But... What do you mean? She's trying to destroy the Ivory Tower, the Camarilla, Marco, Prince Taylor. She's involved in all of it. Oh. Now, you remember what I told you I had planned that I could do? I mean, I, I read it, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm still not there yet. But I might need your help to confirm my suspicions. Uh, do you know anything, Pip? This is important. Uh, I I don't I don't know anything. I don't I don't think I know anything. Has she said anything to you that was strange, or have you met people? You you said the church. Have you been to the church? She said she would keep Sam safe. That they would keep Sam safe. Sam's your She'll friend. Keep Sam safe. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you been, been a very good friend? friend? Have you been able to get hold of Sam? I wasn't sure if I should ring Sam, but I left her with, I left her with Van Diemen. Not well, not Van Diemen. Um, I left a cockroach with Sam to keep her safe, maybe. With that, uh, Jax will hand Pip his phone. Call, call Sam. Find out if she's okay. I'm 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 gonna make a phone call as well. Okay. So Jax will not leave the room, just sort of steps away from Pip <coughs> and makes a call to Joe. And right. says to uh to Joe Get hold of Francis. I need to see Van Diemen tonight. Okay. Um I'll let him know. As soon as possible, Joe. This is really important. Right, Trust no one. Know it's urgent. Trust no one outside of our organization. And I mean that. Do not go into Elysium. It is not safe. Okay. Uh, duly noted. Pull our guys off Elysium immediately. Um, I was going to call you anyway. There was a shooter outside Elysium last night, too. Shot at your friend, the computer geek. Shit. Okay, that's why he's jumpy. I get it. Well, he's always jumpy. But 
Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I say pull the guys off Elysium, have them all head back to uh, my other haven in Northcote. All right, other haven, Northcote, done. And prepare prepare to join the fray tomorrow. I don't want you guys to miss out on that. But also, as I said, trust no one outside of our group right now. Okay, so your group being yourself, Pip, Zane, Aaron, Echo. Nick's Echo and Aaron at this point. I'll explain later. Just uh, if you receive any instruction from anyone else that's not me, if they say it's from me, it's not. I will contact you directly. All right. Understood. And then he gets going. He hangs up and gets going to it. Pip, are you ringing? Yeah. She answers. Hello. Uh, I guess if you're answering the phone, you're probably all right. Um, yes. Are, are you all right? Um, it's sort of more of a scale of like, sort of, and maybe not. Okay, Pip, you're not really making any sense, which is not unusual, but yeah, less than normal. Your friends here are, are lovely. This, uh, Phillips, he's, he's uh, quite a nice man. He's very intelligent. He's treating us very good, actually. Um, Taz, uh, Zane's secretary, she's, uh, well, she's getting on quite well with everyone here. More so than I am. It's a little awkward they won't let us leave. Apparently we're in some sort of trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, they Understand s- library books? I think it's a little more than that. They said maybe you're in trouble, and that's why we were being targeted by someone. So uh, they've got people in suits looking after. This is like an FBI thing. What have you gotten yourself into, Pip? Oh, you, you remember how I told you I was, like, looking after – some elderly people well you know how sometimes elderly people they're a little bit out of control right well these elderly people are like seriously like super out of control and um they might have caused an incident um you hear her walk across the room and she sort of gets to a an area where she you can hear her whisper into the phone now she says listen i've seen some strange things are you you know the book the Wicker Man. Yeah. Are you into something like that? With these people are. I I saw someone go into a doorway, and they were all sort of uh, in some sort of ritualistic orgy or something. I don't know. Like some sort of s- sex cult. Um, I, I I guess it was. I only got a glimpse, but I mean they've they've done nothing to us, but. I don't know what you're into, Pip, but if I'm in trouble and we have to stay here, I mean, I need to, I've been able to call people, but I can't tell anyone where I am, and it's odd. I really would like to go. Yeah, maybe I need to talk to my my friend. Maybe Mrs. Munro can, can fix it. She can okay. fix it. That's yeah. good. And it's been a couple of days now, so people will start worrying. I really have to go to work. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's important. Um, I'll I'll, I'll try and fix it. Uh, do you know where you are? I was still at the the lovely church. I thought they were going to take you home. They talked about it, but then when they looked outside, there was people that they didn't trust, and they said it was safer here. They've been giving us these lovely drinks, though. Oh. Okay. Um, I'll I'll call you back. I'll 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 sort something out. My, okay. my friends will help me. They they will. They they care about me. They they'll help. So I've got my phone on silent. They really don't like us using them. I'm sort of out of the way at the minute. But oh, hang on. Someone someone's coming. I better go. Uh, and she hangs up. Uh, 
Is she okay, Pip? Um, like, it's like a scale thing. Like, I think she's okay, but kind of not. And for the moment, I'll come back to you guys. Zane. While you've locked down your systems, you're sure everything's under control, you've had alerts through your firewalls that people are trying to track you, people are trying to trace you. You're not sure whether it's Jax's people or someone else. A drone buzzes around past your window. Okay, just so you know, it's a storage unit. <laughs> okay, so a drone buzzes around outside, <laughs> and you've got camera footage. I assume you'd have footage around. Yeah. You know, so you've got camera. Okay, so it, not past the window, but past um, your camera scenery. Yeah, it's um, Fort Knox storage facility. Right, excellent. So you feel pretty safe in there, but with uh, drones not only one, but two, just small, just moving around the space. You get the feeling that someone may have an idea of maybe not so much where you are exactly, but there's something in this area to look at. Was there anything you were searching while you were in this space or previous evening? Actually, you uh, didn't mention to me. The, I did. the house that the house that Echo had given you information of. You looked that up, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, so, did uh, what were you looking for in that? Did you get? Did you want like camera footage of it, or were you just looking for where it was? Because it's it said that Jeremy owned it. Um, camera footage, if possible, but more more the location. Okay, so you get the location. Uh, Upper West Melbourne, the old slums area. And you find there are cameras in the street, um, the the regular uh, crossing cameras, cameras on uh, commercial buildings, not too many um, home security cameras, but you're able to get a fairly good view of this place. And I'll tell you how good a view when you give me your intelligence technology role. <laughs> Five. Five, nice. So this is what you gather with the camera footage you, you can see. Um, and I'd like to think uh, some of the cameras on these streets are a lot better than some of the other cameras you've delved into uh, recently and been more upgraded. Even though it used to be a slum area of town, they have been picking up um whether it's the government or whoever, house flippers, picking up some of these older ramshackle sort of 60s and 80s design houses and they've been flipping them, turning them into either businesses or places to live. And so some of the camera footage being grainy, but some of it being very clear. And what you get in the clear footage is an older house, 80s model. It's across the street from wherever this camera is you've tapped into. It's... Looks pretty normal from the outside, but when you make a zoom, you can see its doors look to be metal. A bit odd. The windows are mirrored. They they look normal from the exterior. A closer look, they're a tinted mirrored window. If you weren't looking for it, you'd probably just mistake it as just solar glare. Um can't really tell anything on the inside. The grounds are tidy enough, and there is a shed, just a single car shed. It seems to be in okay condition as well. Moving around the area, you don't see anyone coming in or going out of the place. But that's pretty much what you see from there. Anything else you're looking at when you're facing this building? Cool. So with that, I'll probably, uh, I'm going to do some investigations on my own. So I'm going to leave where I am, uh, Unseen Passage. Right, Unseen Passage. I think that's the one that disguises me from the cameras in there. 
Uh, yikes. Let's go. A ghost on the machine disguises you from cameras. Then I'll do that one. And yeah, you can use unseen passage and then activate ghost in the machine for no additional cost. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that'll be a single rouse check for the unseen passage. Success. Nice. So you are you taking anything with you? Uh, just my laptop. Just my your carry gears. Yeah. Cell phone, new cell phone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Righto. So with that, you exit your fortified container. Cautious as you are in invisible mode. Cautious um cautiously exiting, you see at a distance one drone moving around the space. Uh hundred meters away from you and if uh, one slightly further off maybe 200 250 meters and they're they're highish in the sky like give or take um 50 60 meters in the sky and they're just moving around slowly you can hear that that sort of the light buzz as they're sort of moving the distance yeah. but it is a cold wind and they are disguised a little as far as the sound's concerned but you as far as you're happy you cannot be seen all right, so I'll make my way to this place. Ah, uh, the place that um, Jack's mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Um, the the one that I looked up for Echo. Oh, you okay? You're going to go to the house. Yeah. Sweet. So your whereabouts in Melbourne is your container? Uh, give me a sec. Mm. I believe I choose somewhere close to the old place. Um, uh, it's uh, in on Spencer Street. It's uh, four eight four Spencer Street. And so, which part of it, Melbourne, is that? Like west, east, south, uh, west, west. Okay, so you're not too far from there anyway. It'll take you roughly half an hour walk, maybe a little longer, to get to this area. Um, you come across the house and it's, like I say, you guys probably wake up around 6, 6.30 at night at this point, being uh, the winter. Um, so you're looking at probably 7.30, 8 o'clock-ish by the time you get there. You see exactly what you saw in the camera, but in a bit more of your vision. Um, are you leaving the footpath to go up to the house or are you just hanging around the area? Uh, probably try and get around the back somehow, jump over some neighbours' fences. and Sweet. No problem. So easy enough done. Um, popping over some small waist-high fences. Staying hidden is in your unseen presence, which is uh, pretty easy for you, unless you're making some uh, impressive noise, which I imagine you try not to. Just give me a... <laughs> Yeah, give me a dexterity stealth, but add your um, obfuscate dice to that as well. Okay, so that's that, that, that. Okay, that's still pretty big. <laughs> You're only looking for two successes. Six. Six is good. <laughs> Like, like you know, you're you're in your form. You're hidden from cameras. You're hidden from sight, and you're not the most dexterous person. But that extra added ability of being able to rouse the blood and the vampiric presence within you, within you, allows you to just leap and bound over these fences. Yeah, just because you're a nerd vampire doesn't make you <laughs> useless. You know, but um, no problem to get around the back of this place where you can see the shed. Now you can see for certain it's a exactly that an older it uh, looks like maybe a house made in sixties or seventies, but it's been refaced somewhere in the eighties for sure. Um, you can tell as you look around sort of the, the outer skirting boards, the color of the paints, that sort of old school 
um, off cream with a brown roof and a brown fence, just typical of the 80s. But you can see it clear as day. The doors are painted to look wood, but like you picked up on the camera, they are metal. And the windows are plated as you get sort of closer. You can see, yep, they're mirrored windows, but there's plating on the inside of those suckers. This is not average Joe's house. All right, so I'll be looking for, well, one, I want to try and get into the shed. Okay. The and shed has a large, like the large roller or tilter style door you see on, on the garage. Um, it looks more of a tilter looking at it, but it is hard to say. And it has the the lock face front, um, you know, the old single turn handle with a lock in it. And yep. there's a single man door on the side. And as you get close to that, you see that that's quite, a heavy metal door as well. Okay. Give me a resolve investigation, please. Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> One. Oh, no. Okay, so uh, looking around, the door doesn't seem to have a handle. It's just got a single metallic um, lock face, the old um, deadbolt-style lock, no handle for pushing or pull as far as um, turning handle to open and close. It's got a just a steel grip that you can open the door and close the door with, but nothing else. She's locked up tight. The windows have all been covered over. And you can tell it's similar to the house, that me plated metal on the inside. Yep. Um, is there any trees nearby? There is. There's a few trees in the yard. Nothing like a surrounding tree, just a couple of fruit trees, an old sort of decrepit looking apple tree, and then some sort of um, like rose um, stalks, rose vines and that. But there are larger trees spread among the yard. Yep. So in, in my bag of tricks, I'd like to pull out a camera. All right, no problem. And find a hiding spot for this camera and face it towards the house and garage, like in between the house and garage. Cool, easy enough done. You've done this. This is not your first rodeo. You know how to set up cameras and that. Um, she's a wireless camera hooked to your yeah. computer or phone. Yeah, sweet. Um, it doesn't take you long. You get it in place. And you sort of have a look, making sure it's covering with its wide view range, um, access to the shed and access to the house. You can only see the rear access to the house. No, that's fine. Give me a intelligence investigation, please. Actually, sorry, make it an intelligence awareness. Two, uh, six, two successes and one fail. All right. Two successes is all you needed. As you're setting up the camera, you see some scorch marks near the rear entry door on the ground. It's sort of like a porch with a, a window to one side and, and two steps that just lead up to a small concrete porch. And you can see like black soot or ash or something there. And there seems to be an arm hanging out a hand from behind the porch window laying on the ground is what it looks like yeah I'm going to leave that well enough alone <laughs> I'm not going to give my paranoia at the moment yeah I'm just going to set this camera <laughs> up and head back to my haven no problem so set up the camera head back to your haven you're all in stealth. I, nothing else you wish to do. That's fine. I no, will that's move back to the others as you're heading back to the. You're heading back to your container, your Fort Knox container. Yeah. Okay, cool. Jackson and Pip. Jackson, your phone goes. The crew that you've had looking in on Zane. Uh, they call you. Oops. They call you back. 
Um, one of them calls himself, oh, he goes by the name of Jim Tofty. He says, excuse me, uh, Mr. Spencer, we've sort of triangulated where your friend could be. Got some drones on the outside area. It's a bit hard to tell exactly, but the infrared cameras we thought would get something, but they got nothing. It's just static. Yeah, Zane can hide from cameras, but give me the location anyway. All right. There's a few buildings around there, but no doubt. It's in West Melbourne, and he gives you the rough address of that area. Like I said, three or four houses in that space. Cool. He says, um, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, is he in trouble? No. Uh, well, keep your eyes on the place. Uh, as I said to, I don't know if Joe's put the word out, but we trust no one outside of our organization. Uh, yes, Joe got a hold of me, sir. So keep eyes on that location. If anything you deem is suspicious, and I'll leave that to your discretion. I think you know what I mean. No problem, sir. Let me know I'll keep the drones up high and put them on uh, long range mm, thermal. Yeah, definitely. Um, how how many locate? Like, how many addresses does he give me? Four. Four. And is one of them the storage units? Yeah, it's the property of the, the storage property. unit. I, and I assume, Zane, that it's just in a, is it in an open field or is it stacked up amongst others? How, how does it look with your container is? Give me a sec. Um, uh, it's a apartment block type thing. So it, it's a... It's a Building in near high rises and that. Okay, building near high rises and that, and the containers like around the rear or something, is it? Yeah. Okay, so well, yeah, it gives you gives you I a few addresses, but one of them inside one of those buildings, aren't they? Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like, yeah, a high rise, like a high rise stack of storage units. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. I think I know what he's talking about. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that that gives me an idea. So I got some buildings to look at. Um. What I will uh, ask the storyteller is, uh, I know Jackson probably doesn't know Zane that well, but knowing Zane's paranoia, would any of these addresses stand out to Jackson as a possible better place to look than the others? Uh, the area around it, Zane, is is sort of all commercial like that, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, so they're all kind of similar. Okay. okay. That's yeah. Cool. Um, I will hang up the phone from that, send a message to Joe specifically um, and get him to get eyes on that particular, the, those four address, around that area. Like, obviously the drones yeah. are there, they're keeping an eye on sort of everything, but I'll get Joe to sort of just be around. Okay, cool. Um, and tell him I'll be there within the next couple of hours. I've got an errand to run, but I will meet him there at some point. Okie dokie. Uh, I'll write that down. No problem. Um, in the meantime, Jackson will prepare himself. He will uh, reload and rearm with the two 45 caliber pistols, equipped with suppressors this time as well. Um, two extra mags for each, and a shortened. Um, not you know the you got the the samurai the the katana the slightly shorter version of that which be hidden under his jacket but the Sweet. the handle will be at the bottom so he's got he's got the scabbard up his back so that the handle can be reached from the bottom and can be drawn that way so it's got a leather latch over it, holding it. Yeah. no problem duly noted um what uh, about just what about puppy oh sorry saying yep um i just sent you some links of what it looks like Oh, cool. Okay, so sure. Th take the last one. That's the better one. Cool. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So Pip will send a text to Zane while Mrs. Spencer's on the phone. And what does this text say? The text will say, Porno lady, porno cafe lady is still at the church. Sam is still there. That's not what they said. Miss Munro will fix it. Can you get her to fix it, Zane? They need to be safe, even if we're not. 
Zane, you get said message. <laughs> and won't reply, just too busy trying to look after my own ass at the moment. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Unfortunately, you get no reply. Uh, also, too, Jackson will um, sort of mill around the library, trying not to be obvious about what he's doing so that Pip doesn't get concerned. But he'll be taking a book from one of the shelves and placing it in a satchel, uh, wrapping it in cloth and placing it in a satchel as well. Okay. And taking that with him. Um, and then we'll sort of go to Pip, like, uh, you're ready to go, Pip. We need to go meet Marco. We, we can come what back the... and finish. The... You're going to have plenty of time, I swear. I will, I will allow you, you can reorganize this entire place. I mean, I can see you've done terrible. a lot already. It, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to rediscover my love of books when, when once it's done, I'm sure. It'd be terrible to meet Final Death while it looked like this. It'd be... I know, but this is important. <laughs> this is really, really important. Pip. I mean, this is important too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is really important, but we need to go talk to Marco. We need to find out what's going on. And we need to make sure yeah. Sam is safe, safe. I'm not convinced she's safe where she is. If I'm being frank, if I'm being frank with you. Yeah. And I... I get the feeling you're not entirely sure she's safe there either. No. It's not what they said. She was going to go home. I've arranged to meet with Van Diemen as well. Hopefully we'll hear back from him soon. You said oh. you, you put a cockroach. Yeah. Her, yes? Yeah. Well, they didn't seem to like them. Hopefully... Andy we might have some more answers for you. Mm. But we, we we must go. Pip. Uh, do you still do you still have that that gun that I gave you? Do you need more bullets for it? Yeah, right? it didn't work very well though, like I didn't hit anything. Practice. More practice, that's all you need. And I'll give him an extra magazine for it, just in case. Take take this. Okay. And sort of drop it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also, I, I turn around, actually look at Pip and go, is there, I mean, you're not really a fighter, but is there any, I mean, you don't seem comfortable around firearms. Is there anything else that would make you feel more comfortable? Like, was uh -huh. there any, when you were, I mean, you're probably young enough that you would remember your childhood and your was there anything you wanted to be like with what kind of movie or video game that was there anything you wanted to be like a, a type of fighter when you grew up do you still remember that i always wanted to be invisible and i can do that now and i'll there you go <laughs> well that's your that's your superpower <laughs> you, oh, you be the invisible man okay <laughs> I'd like to stay here, though, but um, I guess maybe that's not. I, I honestly wouldn't mind if you stayed, but I would feel better if we stayed together for now. I'm going to go see Marco, but... Once we've seen Marco, we will try and find Zane, and maybe, hopefully, we can convince Zane that he will be safe here with us together. I think if we stick together, we'll be safe. Apart, not so much. Mm. But that may okay. take that may take some convincing, I think. Um, and just so you know, I am going to get frustrated with him, and I might have to hurt him, just a little bit though. <laughs> like just to get him to come with us. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to. I, I'm not going to hurt him in that way. I just I need him to come with us. I think he's safer yeah. with us. That's why I want you to convince him i mean he doesn't trust me already I, I think he trusts you more than more than anyone else you guys are, you guys are the same clan you, i mean i mean i know you're different but you're the same if you know what i mean uh, kind of we'll work on it 
I mean, if right. he doesn't want to come, he doesn't want to come. I don't want to force him. But I, I truly believe he'll be safer with us than without. Mm. Because if I can find him, so can they. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, Marco yeah. first, though. Definitely. Right. Um, and we will then leave the library and run a series of tunnels, which will lead to a, a rather large um, garage, which will have several vehicles inside. Um, we'll be taking a less um, spicuous <laughs> vehicle this time. <laughs> uh, so just a, uh, like a Ford Explorer, still black tinted windows, but just no worries. Not, not taking any of the muscle cars that are there. Good as gold. So you guys pop into your vehicle, and with that, we'll take a five-minute break, and we'll no come problem. back. No problem. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Take five minutes, grab a drink, go to the bathroom, and we will return.
and we are back welcome everyone welcome raiders twin gets dropping the raid thank you very much dude appreciate it welcome back everybody uh mina nutty and we got a we got a drax in there as well we got twin gats we got other people lurking in in the wings uh welcome in everyone um and uh we'll get back into the show second half all right as you guys enter into the car you're heading off to meet marco pip your phone goes it's a busy night for your phone twice Twice in one night. It is a... Now, this is a good point. Who who has your number? Well, sorry, that's not that's not a good point. Aaron has your number. Do you have it listed in, like, under his name? Or would you recognize it? What would you have him listed as? I would have him listed as Doggo. Doggo. <laughs> so that's what pops up on screen as your phone goes off. Doggo. Well... And I'll answer the phone and I'll woof. Woof! He goes, Pip, don't be a dick. Listen, there's uh, people shooting at us. Probably going to be shooting at you too. I'm with the Gangrel at the minute. We're on another job. Uh, it's long-range rifles. I've taken a few down, and a few of my Gangrel buddies have as well. The bike crew and me, we're all heading out together. We're getting out of this place words about of what's going down and people kindred are freaked out by the way this knife that i got conscripted is freaking awesome should have seen them melt from there so anyway it's not that's more so we've been shot at for at a distance snipers you guys need to lay low i've warned echo as well oh. good dog and don't die I'm not. We're heading out. We've got another group of riders we'll meet up with out of Melbourne. <clears throat> it's getting a bit crazy, and I didn't sign up for this, and they ain't paying me enough. Mm. What about Echo? Weren't you going to keep Echo safe? Hmm. Well, if she comes back with enough money, maybe, but she's given me no promises as yet. That's uh, That's really cold of you. Yeah. Hmm. Fair point. Look, there's other people I kindred crew that I work with and hang with. She's not the only one. I haven't seen her in ages. She turned up out of the blue. Um, she's got herself a big crown and she's ruling whatever now. I don't follow that shit. Well, I appreciate you, you calling in and letting me know that I'm in trouble. Possibly well, I, more trouble. I tried to call Jack's buddy straight to answer machine and Zane never answers so yeah well, will we see you again well I hope so I, as long as you don't die and I don't die but um, at this point the gangrel are looking for a fight but we won't fight on our terms and there's meant to be something big going down with the SI as you know and mm. we don't want to be caught up in that and in whatever else is going on here with Sabat and well, Ministry and Anarch. And and, yeah, there's... And the Scourge. Yeah. He's got my shoes. Okay. Yeah. Look, pass that message on, eh? Yeah, yeah, I'll try. I don't know about Mr. Rivera. But um, Mr. Spencer's here, so I'll tell him. All right, no problem. I'm out. And he just hangs up. Cool. <laughs> and I will relay some of that information <laughs> to Jackson that uh, Aaron's bitching out. <laughs> Jackson pretty much just roll his eyes and go, yeah, figures. I mean, I, mean, I think they're fighting. I mean, it, we know that we're in trouble, Pip. I mean, this is why we're not in my usual vehicle. But we do have to keep our eyes open. So you, you're probably more observant than me. So when we get to when we get to the park, just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, maybe disappear, if you will, and just mm. let me know if you see anything that's not. It was good of him to let us know we're in trouble. More trouble? Well, I mean, I don't think we're in any more trouble than we're already in. I hope I see him again. Sometimes he's a good dog. He's all right. He has his uses. I mean, if you pay him enough, he's good. Like, he's great. It smells bad. He's, he's a good... 
it definitely does his job well. Annoying as fuck, but he's, he does his job well. And as you guys finish your conversation, you pull up to the meeting place around about 8, 8.30ish. Public toilets in a park area, small walkway across to it. A few people in the distance, no one close by really. Uh, from So we can see the toilets from where we pulled the car? Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, a, there's a pair parking of area out of, the, space. out of the glove box and just have a but a, a quick scout of the area. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Well, Marco, to see if he's... Marco, I mean, I don't okay. think he's going to be in plain sight, but I'm sort of looking in and around the, the public toilets and just seeing sort of what's in the general area of the toilet, toilet block. Okay, sweet. Um, you will need... Give me... Give me a wits awareness... And that would be one success. One success. You scan the area, you don't see him at all. Not one iota of anyone near the toilet area. Which is kind of what I expected, to a degree. I'll turn to Pip and say, I can't see Marco anywhere. Do you mind? Um, if you want to stay here and hide yourself, and I give In him... the time that... Um... <laughs> He's gone look around the toilet. I've done unseen passage. <laughs> I look around and I was like, uh, Pip. Mouse check. Pip. Fuck. Yeah, give us that rouse check. <laughs> no, good on the rouse bitch. check. All right, <laughs> that's good. Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, be like, wait up. Pip, I know you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. I don't know what kind of signal you can give me, but let me know if you see anything that doesn't look right. I'm going to go see if I can find Marco. Stay close. And I will move quietly, sticking to the shadows towards the toilet block. Okay. Yeah. So I'll use Sense the Unseen around the toilet block and sort of slowly walk around the, All right. the toilet so block. Jar, you give me with your sense of the unseen up. You give me a resolve awareness and mm -hmm. add your uh, whichever sense of the unseen's under. I can't remember. Uh, auspics. Auspics. That's the word. And I'm going to roll opposing. Ooh. For. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Your eight beats my five. So you see Marco. Pip, you, you see him only. Jax, you're sneaking. Uh, and Pip, you would, uh, how far behind Jax would you be? Uh, or in front? Maybe a few steps behind him. Okay. Because he said to stick close. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not moving quickly. So, so it, just like casually walking Ooh. towards the area. So you see Marco is... And near the toilet where Jax uh, held the, the girl and sort of slammed her the night before, um, there's like a couple of bushes in the tree sort of there. And right there beside the tree in the bush is Marco. He is well hidden. He is using an ability which you can see through with your um, sense the unseen, I believe. And you can see he's just blending in with the shadows quite nicely. Uh, if he, even, even as you're using your ability, Pip, if, as he's not moving, it's almost like he can't be seen at all, but you do see him move his arm, and that's what sort of pulls you towards that area. Um, he's deathly silent. He's making not a noise, and he is sort of making motion, like he's sort of almost pacing just a, a step to the side, a step to the side, but he is completely invisible to anyone else around except for you. And he's not looking towards us? Uh, he actually, he would be. He would see you because he has Eyes of the Beast active. So he would see Pip and Jax. Hmm, but not making a motion to... Hmm. He's waiting for you to get closer. It'd be obvious because you're moving towards a taller block. I sort of walk up behind Mr. Spencer, Mike. 
he's there and he sees us but he's not moving uh, which like, which side pet he's right, on there yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can't I, see. I, I can't see you, Pip. Left or right? I sort of described the wall. <laughs> so he describes where you slam the woman up okay. next to. And as you move closer, um, Marco does just move out of the shadow and let himself be seen. Okay. Only barely, though. He, he can be seen. He's removed his um, cloak. But now he stays in the shadow and he says, Jax, Pip. Marco, um, the hot, this whole time my hand is inside my jacket on the handle of one of my pistols. No problem. And His hands up, are clear. I'll throw up catch, uh, rapid reflexes as well, which is free. Okay. His hands are clear and in view. Uh, he's wearing roughly the same sort of um, just casual suit that he would normally be wearing, sporting his same uh, The Doors style hairdo, curly brown locks similar facial features um generally he doesn't seem to have any weapons obvious on him but you did hear him say that he was going to pick something up to protect himself and he does seem nervous he looks sort of behind the trees and he looks behind you and he goes you guys weren't followed and you know me better than that i thought i knew a lot of people better than a lot of things but shit has been pretty weird lately you don't fucking say you're not wrong. I was a sheriff. I was in charge one minute, and next thing, the sabbat everywhere. That is the kindred life, Marco. We know that as well. Speaking of Bing. sheriff, it appears that I'm now, well, interim sheriff as it, as it happens. Although I don't know that it means anything right now. He backs up just a tad when you say that, and he goes, so you're working for her? As far as she's aware... I maintain what I told you in your office. All I'm right, and you too, loyal, Pip, you're good. I'm loyal to the Ivory Tower, not who sits on the throne. Fear. Pip? He just sort of shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> He's like, if I talk like, I'll, just, I'll be yeah. seeing. So you're still invisible. He gets that. He says, oh, it's all right. I can see you nod. That's fine. Things are complicated, Marco. Echo has put herself in a very, very powerful position with a lot of pa a lot of people. She's not, she's been very careful. She's not given anything away. Who which serves is why, her? Which is why I've not acted because I have no evidence to act. All Everyone right. serves her right now. She's the prince. I mean, I get that, but I, she must have had someone backing her to get voted in that easily, that quickly over me. It's, well, you weren't there. That is why the she... Have been cast. You didn't show. Nathan pulled out. Left only one. <sighs> Yeah, it's not that I didn't show. I had no choice. Like I said, I was being chased down. I said, regardless of what who she had in her pocket, when you were a no-show and Nathan pulled out, there was only one decision to be made. Oh, they wouldn't. The council would not have chosen her had the votes not been in her favour. Guaranteed, there would have been a stand-in. She definitely had support from Tremere. In so Nathan's door. in her pocket then. I, I, it's hard to tell. Again, we don't know who's who. If what Zane's telling us is true, Timothy's infiltrated Elysium and can be anybody. So we don't know who we're talking to at any time. Yes, yeah, so I know you could be Timothy right now. I could be. Pip could be. There are many shape changer kindred. You've seen me, so some of you have, uh, take a snake form. It, it happens. We have to be cautious. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to see such things. I can only act on what I see in the moment. Pip and I both do, and I can see that you are truly who you are, and Pip should be able to tell that I'm truly who I am with his vision up. Either way, I need, well, we need 
solid evidence that Echo is working with or is part of the Sabbat before we can take it to the council. As you say, we don't even know who we can trust on the council. Mary Wade is our priority at this point, regardless. Echo has made moves and made decisions which has council on side for that. That will happen. Okay. But it will also diminish Camarilla numbers. We're going to lose a lot in this incursion. I think that is half the plan. I don't know whether Sabat had anything to do with Mary Wade being captured in the I... first place. It is entirely possible. It's also possible that she works for them as well. I was keen on getting her f back, found, finding out some truths, but now from Wait, what we working know... Working for the Sabat or the SI? The Sabat, I think. Are you sure? What evidence no, do you not. have? I don't have any evidence but hearsay at the moment, but her name was used when the attackers came upon me and the prince's other coterie members. It's entirely possible the prince still lives, or well, former prince, Taylor, still lives. Pip has had Pip's a vision. Pip's bored and exploring the uh, toilet block. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just wandering around the toilet block. I just start like after that last question about whether I can tell if it's him or not. I sort of like look at him really closely, and then I just walk off. <laughs> Do you want to make a check on him? Yeah, why not? Okay, you and you have your vision up anyway. So give me a uh, resolve awareness or resolve investigation. Your choice. Resolve awareness. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six out of seven dice. Nice. His form doesn't shimmer. It doesn't shake. It it doesn't move like the way you've seen in the past with Timothy. Um, was it with any of you uh, around? Jax or Pip when he transformed, when Marco transformed in the past? I no, was just, just Jax I was. and Jax was, Zane. I was Jax and Zane. Okay. Yeah, so, so Jax, when he's transformed before, because you're steering right at him as well, you saw the the movement in his skin and everything like that. There's nothing going on here that you can see. And Pip looking at with with those, you know, the extra abilities you have, you're not seeing anything out of the ordinary at this point. He looks straight up. He looks exactly like the person he's meant to be. Nice. Right. And I'll wander around and I'll keep a lookout, but I'm sort of like, <laughs> you know, also not doing anything very useful. But So with that high check, I will also say that the tree where Marco was standing, you can see behind it and there is a like a, a bag canvas style bag quite long and it sits with its zip open and you can see a couple of weapons within the bag that he's not carrying on his person but they are there so in that case then Marco two things before I can act I need solid evidence of Echo's betrayal. All right. Second, if indeed Mary Wade is involved, why the hell would she have herself be captured by the SI of all people? Well, I don't think the SI are working with the Sabat. I think she got captured accidentally. But from what I understand, from what Leslie's coterie we're talking about it's possible she might have been leaning to, she's trim air full of magic she may have been leaning towards the sabbat for what they know and what abilities or power she can gain she is very old and she has a lot of power indeed uh, she, so she may have been leaning leslie towards more suspected this before i don't know if leslie did or not it's just the two members of his coterie that i was talking to that bears can't remember the names of right now <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, so... <laughs> oh, I have to plot the sheet, but yes. Um, 
it's just so many things that don't add up even before i mean the attack on elysium uh william chopin's possible informants it, so many loose ends i think william's in on it too this is the problem there's too many people who could be in on it how else are they so keep... well, i mean they breach elysium every time camera is effectively not in control is what you're saying well i don't think so at this point i think they're just trying to keep it in the public kindred eye that they are but it looks like hey, you've seen it the last couple of weeks it's been chaos so you're telling me well you're not really telling me what i'm telling you is if the camarilla has lost control of melbourne and we have sabat at our highest level including our council why the fuck are we even fighting We fight to I keep... could get on a plane tomorrow and be in Chicago where the camera holds strong, where my sire rules. Isn't well partly. I don't have to stay here and potentially die over something that's already happened. If we let the Sabbat or any other the Anarchs, the Thin Bloods drive in now, and what was the point in the first place? If you run you become no better than them. We should stand for what we believe in. Prince Taylor. We don't even know who we can trust within our own organization right now. So we should root the evil out and bring them to stand in front of kindred. We can punish them. You've seen so how I do it. Who can we trust? Who can we put it to? You're talking well, about the Prince of Melbourne right now who has shown no weakness and has taken control in a very short space of time. But she has. Her old friend, the woman, the older woman. I forget her name. Peggy, I don't care for her much. Peggy, Peggy, yes. Peggy the name. So. The human. Yes, that's the one. Digging around, I have. You want some Evidence? I'm close. I can't get anything of Echo. She doesn't show up on cameras. She doesn't do anything out of the ordinary that would give herself up. However, she does visit this person frequently enough to be spotted and call them frequently enough to be tagged. This person that she visits, this Peggy, has also had visit from an FBI agent from America. That bit of, bit of digging... Turns out may well know Echo as well. So how long will it take you to get this proof? Because I told you I have the means to remove Echo. All I need is the evidence. I shall get this agent. That's what I'm working on. If I can get this agent and we can oust Echo from the chair and find prince taylor and get him back so this I, this be... agent from the u.s might be able to help with that i'll give you a number before we leave for my sire sheriff of chicago he may be able to get some information for you Balthazar, i believe the name should be familiar it does ring a bell i've heard Prince Taylor, talk of him. All right, give me his contacts. I will give him the name. And once I know more, I'll let you know the details. Make sure you let him know uh, the messages from Sheriff Spencer. That will probably aid in expediting information. I haven't had a chance to tell him of my newly or new appointment as it's technically not official as yet all right tread safely then i will get back to you when i can and i'll give him um balthazar's number and i'll give him a number of a burner phone i have sweet zane during this time what have you been doing 
you headed back half an hour ish back to your buildings, your your hideaway. Um, yeah, just checking that camera that I set up periodically, seeing if anything's coming or going and stuff like that, and trying to track down these two, see if I can find out where they went. Okay. So uh, you've had a couple of good rolls tonight. I'm going to be pretty easy on you. Um, you're still going to make a roll, but give me a, <laughs> give, me a uh, give me an intelligence technology. And you're going to do a scan of using your scan software. You're going to do a scan of Melbourne areas. You don't really have any idea of exactly where they're going to be, but you could find them. Cameras, cameras everywhere. Facial recognition software helps. Okay, so I got two successes, but I got two uh, of the beast dice. Two successes, but two red skulls. Yes. Okay. So the good thing is it's only if you fail that that means anything, (laughs) but the two successes counterbalance that out. Um, Lucky for you, you're pretty hungry tonight already. (laughs) (laughs) You feel the beast rise within you and your facial recognition software picks up on Marco and Jax. Not perfect. It's it's a, probably not as good as the cameras you were looking on the house with earlier, but you get a distantial camera shot. can only see a very corner edge of a the toilet block in a park and you can see what looks to be conversation going on. So with that, I call Pip's phone. <laughs> Pip, when you went invisible, did you turn your phone to silent? Uh, Pip's phone was on vibrate anyway. Uh, always on vibrate. Very good. Yeah. Your phone is vibrating in your pocket as the discussion with Marco and Jax has been held and you're wandering around this toilet block. So I've gone into the men's toilet block by the stage, <laughs> I do. Are you going inside? Yes. Yeah. I will answer the phone. I don't miss um, this, you know. <laughs> miss you don't miss... P- public toilets. They're disgusting. Can I help you? What are you doing there? I'm talking to talking to Marco. Didn't Jack <sighs> I can't remember if we told you. He need to talk to Jax. Oh. Well, he's now, outside. Now, 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 uh, And I'll slowly walk back and <laughs> sort of, does Jax have pockets anywhere? And just sort of slide the phone into your pocket. Yeah, Jax, it's a leather jacket, so he's got a, there'd be side pockets. He's probably, uh, probably, there'd be like pockets to put your hands in the sides. Probably be Actually, to... before I do that, I'll be like, all right, shush, shush. <laughs> And then I'll put the phone in the Which I assume you'd feel the weight of it go into your I pocket. Would, yeah, I mean, I, I, at least you're trying to stealthy, stealthily putting it in there. Yeah, I, I would probably definitely feel it and be like, what the? <laughs> just he sort of just like tosses it and he makes a bit of a thud in your pocket. <laughs> what the? I'll put my hand in my pocket and feel the phone. So I'd probably recognize it as Pip's phone, I'd imagine. But what the hell? Marco hello, looks hello, at you. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, uh, Marco, one. I'm actually. Gonna, I'm going to put it on speaker. Uh, Zane. Is that, Do you trust him? Trust who? Is that him? Uh, Marco looks up. Don't don't put it on speaker. There's and he looks around the area. He goes. There could be anything going on. He's right. And I'll turn it off. Speaker. Anything. <laughs> yes, Zane. It is him. Prince is alive, I think. We already know this, Zane. Well, we know that he used, he was at least a day ago, maybe two. I don't know. We don't know. Still alive. Still alive. Do you have proof? Only what Timmy said. Jeremy. I don't know. Who is he? What did he say to you exactly? I asked who blood I got. And he told you it was he... Leslie's blood. Not in so many words. What 
what else, Zane? What else did he tell I'm you? Dead. Yeah, I, I forgot. <laughs> Zane, you're in trouble. You know that, right? Which is why you've gone into hiding, I guess. Yes. Yes. I know hiding. where you are, Zane. If I can mm. find you, they can find you. Uh, okay, I've got to move again. Bye. No, Zane, don't hang up. <laughs> and it God. clicks in your ear. <laughs> Mother I'll bring it back. No it's answer. Zane. <laughs> no answer. Okay, he is, he is definitely no answer. <laughs> While that conversation was going on, Marco sort of edged back and reached behind the tree and grabbed the bag, and he looks at you, Pip. He's not doing anything that looks untoward or dangerous, and he just says to Pip, I've taken a few of the weapons that I could gather for myself, but I did take one of the guns. This is Jenny's, and this is during the conversation that Jax is on the phone with Zane. He says, this was Jenny's rifle. Uh, I think Jax would like it. I don't use these things. Here, take it. He realizes you're in cloak. So he sort of just leans it against the taller door, looking around that there's no one looking, and says, just tell him it's his, all right? And he zips up the bag, sort of waiting for Jax to finish the conversation, getting ready to go. Right. So uh, I will, after not having him pick up again, it's like I just swear under my breath and like, Fuck. All right, Jax, I'm, I'm gone. I'm yeah. gone. Do what I have to do. I'll get a hold of Balthazar. That rifle that I've just lent next to Pip there, that was Jenny's. No need to keep it in lock up any longer. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it'd definitely come in handy, maybe. Uh, how many rounds with it? It's got the full mag. Right. I can't remember what it was. I'll text that to you. That's probably if it's, uh, if it's the M82. 50 cal, it's only, I think it's only eight or seven or eight in a mag. It's, it's a full mag either way. Um, so he leaves that for you. It doesn't have a case. It's just the rifle okay. scope and just a strap. And he's got it, his bag, which is, like I say, a long duffel bag, which has got, a, you can hear the clanking of a bunch yep. of other weapons inside it. So get hold of me with our evidence ASAP and I can deal with Echo. And it's just dealing with the council. But with the evidence... It won't matter who's Sabat in the council. If the evidence is overwhelming, they will keep quiet if the Camarilla is in majority still. All right. I plan on it. I had so, a good position and I don't want to lose it. Well, you may still lose it, but at least... Well, if, the prin if Prince Leslie's still alive, you won't. Depends on what the council decides to do. That's correct. Right, watch your backs. Don't do anything dumb and I'll get a hold of you soon. Indeed. And he sort of walks behind the tree and moves into the shadow zone and dissipates from sight. And I'll roll some dice and pip. If you're looking at him, you probably see him shimmer, but you will keep it. <laughs> well, he goes out of your view, but you'll be able to see once he comes back into view. No, we're all good Jackson too, so. is looking around to see who else is around considering now he has a 50 caliber sniper rifle leaning up against the toilet block and playing with you. So Marco looked around, made sure there was no one there before he leaned it next to Pip. He was about to leave thinking you were going to be on the phone longer and then yet the phone call abruptly ended. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. No, no, so no one is around. Um, okay. Give me a. That's a good point, though. Yeah. There are people in the area. You never know. Give me a. What's awareness? And Pip, you can do that too if you like. Four successes. Pretty good. Four successes. Four. Four on four die. I love it. One, two, three, four. Both with four. So both of you looking about yourselves, looking around the area, sort of like I say, half past eight ish at night um there's people in the distance but no one close enough that it should bother and your vehicle's only you know stones throw away from where you are so at this point it seems safe enough i'd stick to the shadows and move back to the car um 
sort of looking around, knowing I can't see Pip, and just just saying, not loudly, but hopefully loud enough that he can hear. So, uh, heading back to the car, Pip. I'll see you there. Hopefully, well, maybe, and just start walking. Again, trying to stick to the shadows as much as possible. Especially okay. now I'm carrying a giant, a giant weapon with me. <laughs> Zane, so you see this going on. You see Marco lean a weapon against the wall, walk away, disappear from complete view. And the Jax grabs the rifle, takes it with uh, Pip, who you don't see, um, moves to the vehicle as well. And I'll look directly at the camera if I can see the camera. I will look at it and just look directly at Zane. It's a whack of a distance away, but you'd be able to pick up on it. You'd know the areas. I'm just looking directly at it, just because so, I know Zane's watching, so I'm just going to look at it. Assuming Zane's watching, looking at it. And Zane, you would see that. You'd see him acknowledge the camera. Whether you take that as he's looking at you or not, that's totally up to you. Yes. <laughs> it's not a menacing look or anything like it's just looking at the camera to say look I know you're watching <clears throat> right, yeah, where are you um, headed to Jackson Pip? oh sorry Zane carry on no just watching just following okay I will be heading to the location given to me by my crew alright so we'll uh, what is it Spencer Street or uh what street was it? Uh, that is uh, State. I can't even read that. Something like that. State Roto 50. No, that's something else. <laughs> Let me read that street. To name. The yeah, Spencer anyway. Street. There it Spencer is. Street, yeah. Spencer Street. You are correct. And I will be make. I will be sticking to main thoroughfares. Knowing that Zane will be full well be watching my progress. Right, so where you are there, it would take, well, I'm going to say, give or take, guesstimation bears. That's, that's, um, if, that's if Pip does get in the car. I'll wait to, to know that Pip's in the oh, car before point. I take off. Good point. Yeah, Pip's in the car. You would have seen the door open. Okay. And the door opens, closes. Pip, you probably re emerge after opening the door in plain yeah. sight, would you? Okay. Yeah. I'd also ask, uh, did uh, the sheriff say four days? Four days ago? Four nights ago? Four, yeah. Four or five. He went into hiding four nights ago. Okay. Night. And I'll just sit there and yeah. start yeah. concentrating really hard on ah. some stuff while we drive around. No problem. Ah. Good oak. Um, yeah, before, obviously, take it, I would put the large rifle in the boot of the vehicle which in the boot of all of my vehicles, there is a small lockbox under under the rear floorboard where the spare tire would normally be. Spare tire for my the this vehicle's on the roof. And then the, the tray where that would be is basically a small arsenal would be space for a long rifle, probably a shotgun, a couple of smaller assault rifles as well. Sweet, so no hassle. The rifle is stored away in the boot of the vehicle. Um. Pip, you're concentrating on three, four nights ago, two, three nights ago, whatever he said there. Um, are you trying to force a premonition? Trying to force a premonition about All Sheriff right. Marco over the last four nights. All right. Where are you sitting in the car? That's my first question. In the back seat. You're in the back seat. This would make... Jackson a little uncomfortable that he got in the back seat. <laughs> He's not used to being a chauffeur, but eh, it's Pip. He'll let him. He'll let him get away with it. All right. So you're sitting in the back seat. Um, give me now. Where are you, you Pip? There you go. I think I have to rouse if I'm forcing it. Yeah, you do. I'm just checking it now. Yeah. So it says um, one rouse check because you're trying for yep, it. So I pass that. Nice. So you rouse the blood. You're well thinking about three or four nights ago. Uh, what do you, you just want to see what Sheriff Marco was doing in that time. That's what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. You see, give me a resolve all specs according to this. Resolve on all specs. All specs. So that is this. 
two successes. I was hoping for a little higher, but I can yeah. I can give you something. So you go. Can I use a willpower to you re-roll? can indeed use a willpower. You just can't re-roll your um blood die. Yep, which are the only ones with successes on it, so. Sweet. So you can re-roll up to three die using a willpower. Oh my thing okay. down. Ooh, it's giving me one more success. <laughs> one more, okay. I'll give you a little more than the, what I was going to give you. So, you see, sitting in the back seat of the vehicle, uh, do you? Because how do you? How are you seated? Do you just sitting normally? Are you bracing yourself? Not knowing how, because sometimes you fall down. What's your positioning? Just I'd probably a, be yeah. in the middle seat and have my legs sort of pressed up against, like my knees pressed up against each, sort of like man spread. That man right. spreading thing. And have my knees <laughs> pressed up against each each of the front seats and then okay. sort of like maybe brace my hands against the the seats as well. Because I know okay. sometimes I'm holding onto the vehicle, concentrating on Marco. You get a you, you close your eyes, or well, your eyes at least go hazy, one or the other, you're not sure which. And you fall into almost like a dream state. You feel yourself falling you look almost as if you're watching yourself falling 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 you are now standing in a room you're watching yourself standing in the space you've seen something similar familiar a beard upended old spring beard or something was it similar maybe to what you saw Prince Taylor on when he was being drained? But it, the room is different somehow. There's no, it's not a bed, it's a cage. And you look around the room and there's one, two, three, a large stairway going up. Four cages, five maybe. The room gets a bit hazy around the edges. What you thought you recognize, you don't recognize now. There's people in these cages. And there's Marco. He looks at one cage, says something to the person which you can't really make out in the cage, and they lean their arm out of the cage, and he takes a massive bite of it. You can see the blood dribbling onto the floor, and he drinks and drinks, and then this person sort of pulls their arm away as Marco stands up. He shifts ever so slightly in one arm, and then his looks like his shoulders dislodge and his bones move, and his body changes, and he turns into this huge man-sized king cobra over a matter of sort of 10 seconds. He weaves his head back and forth in a trance-like state and then bashes it against the cage, rocking the cage back and forth. And this creature, this person in the cage, moves to the back of the cage. They're in clothes. They're not naked or in anything singlet undies styles. They, they are in whatever clothing they would normally wear. This person is in like a T-shirt, maybe track pants. You can see multiple marks on the arm where it's been fed. But then the snake just bounds its head onto this cage again, tearing it open with its fangs and engulfs the head of this creature and it bites it in half. Not swallowing it like you'd expect a snake to do, much more jaw pressure than that. And as it tears it, you see the other people in the cages all cringe away. You can see like they're yelling, but you can't hear anything. This is a silent image to you. And the other half of the body just turns to ash in the bottom of the cage as the snake finishes devouring the half of the body in one big gulp throat you can see this top half of the body disappearing into the throat of this huge king cobra as it moves to the second cage the other creature who you recognize now is probably kindred since the other one turned to ash and they are as they 
pull back. They bare their teeth. You can see the eyes and the foreheads change, the beast showing they are hungry, these creatures in the cage. But this king cobra is feeding from them. After a moment or two, slowly reforms back to Marco. Sort of stretches his neck, stretches his arms and points at one of the other cages and can you give me a what's awareness, please? Much better. Five. Five is good. The motion he makes with his mouth basically says to the creature that's there, you serve the wrong leadership and you hunt the ivory tower. And then he walks up to the cage and still reading his lips with that roll, he says, from best you can make out, he says, you shall be tomorrow's dinner until we find out who's behind this and what they are going to do next. And then the vision fades ever so slightly. You feel your grip on the outside world, holding onto the seats, your feet on the floor. Give me another wits awareness, please. Five again? Oh, no, six, because the zero is a ten in it. Six? Six, six of six. Is, six is good. Six is very good. Uh, you're whipped out of that vision, but not back into the car where you're driving. You feel your mind push around, move around to the back seat, through the back seat, into the boot, to the rifle. Now you're looking out the eyes of someone else, not yourself. You look down. You're sitting in a chair. You're tied. There's people in front of you. Aaron, Echo. Ah, Aaron jams his claws into your leg. That was weird. You want to tell him something, but it's going to be horrible what you tell him. Once again, you can't hear anything that's going on. But you can see everything. They're asking questions, but you don't know what it is. But you you feel yourself giving the answers. And then the door is closed. Moments pass. More moments pass. They're gone. And the door clicks back open. A dark, dark shadow in the room. Just before the door closed, someone tried to shoot you. She was red-headed, smart-mouthed. She thought she ran the roost. And here she stands in the blackest of shadows in front of you again. And all you see is fire, fire, fire now. And then you pull out of your vision and are in the back seat of the car again. You recognize in the shadow the red haired woman as Echo. A very distorted version of her. But it was her. As your car pulls up on the street, Roughly where you think Zane is. And that is about where we'll call the game. Tonight's session is done. Awesome. Well done, team. Once again, uh, thank you, Trash and Mr. Grimm, for coming along and telling our story. Thank you, Chat, for hanging out with us tonight, as usual. Uh, without you, we wouldn't have a story to tell. So thank you everyone for spending your time uh, here with us on a Sunday night to Vampire the Masquerade. 
so as per usual we will do our um, moments section where we'll uh, get a moment from the players and the storyteller uh, about tonight's session and if, for you guys too so if you have a moment that stands out from for you tonight chuck it in the chat we'll read it out um back to you storyteller cool 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 right so crazy crazy game tonight crazy um zane we'll start with you eh what do you think stood out for you pip and his bloody books <laughs> A disorganized library, and that's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, great and, character. And also storyteller for his great descriptions of stuff. Love it. <laughs> Just winging it. Just winging it. Thank you. Yes, the books The books are awesome. Uh, Jax, we'll follow up with you. Uh, yeah, like literally, I it, it, got to give props to Trash. The... Zane going into hiding and just freaking out and moving around like knowing obviously knowing that Jax has people that could possibly track him down and knowing that okay he's not safe he can't trust anybody the paranoia yeah trash well done it definitely yeah. came across definitely and of course I Pip agree. is Pip I agree, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pip. Segue to you. Uh, I really liked um, the whole library thing and Jack sort of having this disorganized library and that sort of gave me room to play with it a bit. But every time I have a premonition, I know it's going to be like fantastic because <laughs> you're just so me. good at sort of like drawing out, um, you know, elements of the story. I think that premonition thing's quite a unique sort of power and it sort of uh, calls on the storyteller to sort of invoke like a situation and you probably don't have them all listed out you're just like well this is what i'll have you see like and you only just you know go that's what he'll see in the moment um yeah and it's always just so um beautifully illustrated through through words so um it's always it. good you're not wrong um and at the best of times i'm usually I'm tired and frazzled. And I can't think of half the words I want to. And I say <laughs> things without thinking sometimes. And I see Drax says, the drone goes past your window. Oh, I don't have a window. <laughs> so yeah, that that's, that's one of those occasions. But hey, you know, it's, it's we, hey, we fix it on the spot. Uh, and Mina there uh, honestly has to be the, I don't miss this in the mail toilets from uh, Grim and here from Pip. <laughs> and also to when Pimps uh, sent a message, to, uh, sent a cockroach to protect the woman. I mean, it's got cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, there's a couple of the, the main thing for me is Zane tonight. I, and I have to agree yeah. with Jax on this one. I felt like Zane really flourished and he had a good, like normally when I go, Hey Zane, what are you doing? I get a two minutes of five eights or nothing. But tonight he had a really good spat. I don't know how many minutes it was, but give or take, it felt like a good amount of time back and forth going to do what he was doing, setting up his camera, doing some in behind scenes stuff that, that wasn't just checking cameras on the old, yeah. um, on the computer and then the way he spoke um just rambling to zane uh, to, to jacks on the phone um you know tim jeremy tim blah 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 blah, blah you know sort of that's come up across like you said in that yeah, sort of paranoia fear. fear came across yep. really well and then when he was talking to pip going need to talk to jacks no 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 you know just just really forcing the issue and then just my one moment of laugh was pip saying it's about a church vampires right <laughs> <laughs> um premonitions forcing premonitions i didn't expect that and i didn't know where to go with it so you kind of got a double premonition there um because you roll really high on that last roll i thought you know what i'm going to give you two little things two little tidbits so yeah yep hard to i, I was thinking shit what do i give what don't i give <laughs> so i had to think about what what uh what our man marco might be doing at any given night and then thought, hey, let's give you some history lessons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well done, everybody. Um, appreciate it. No worries. Uh, yeah, so obviously come back and see us next week for the continuation of the story. Um, we may not have much left. Uh, so we'll probably we'll be carrying on from the remainder of this evening, which is about halfway done. Yep. Um, the following in evening, Wednesday evening, is the attack on the SI. And then who knows what will happen so um definitely come back and see us for that 
next Sunday night. Of course, tomorrow night we'll be starting new maps. We're doing Dragon Heist, uh, the Waterdeep Dragon Heist maps starting tomorrow night, guys. So if you want to come and hang out, talk D&D &D and uh, watch me uh, recreate these maps, come and hang out, come and chat. Should be a bit of fun. And then, of course, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, the start session one of Lost Minds of Findelba, uh, where you'll see Grim, you'll see Trash, you'll see Era and JJ coming in as the players for for that story. Should be should be fun. Uh, depends whether Baz wants to kill you more than Evil did in COS. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I mean... Anyone could die at this point, and we're already dead, to be fair. <laughs> but anyway, that's it from us, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. We're going to raid Josie Poser. Uh, guys over there doing the D&D &D stuff, so we're going to go over and raid them. Uh, thank you, Baz, our storyteller, once again, for an amazing story. And we will see you guys um, tomorrow, doing things and stuff. Bye-bye.